Welcome everybody to the nationwide prayer campaign to end abortion forever. Again, we have Father Barada, and today he will be leading the rosary. And we will get started in just a second. Hey, everybody, could you hear me? Um, Father, Father right now is in Colorado Springs. He just did a talk. I'm so sorry. He just did a talk on uh, purgatory. He's in his trailer and his phone overheated. So I, that was only one thing. When he got to his trailer, I heard someone knocking on the door and curse him out. So I think we're just getting a little bit of a entanglement with the snares of the enemy. I hope you could hear me right now. So he's trying to get back on right now as we speak. Um, his talk is on the the Catholic vote. Um, and you know that he's really, really active in this right now. Lord, we uh, ask you right now, we can't switch it on to the, the formal prayers we do every day to the three hearts, but we ask you to please consecrate us and all our families, our loved ones, our friends, to the three hearts of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the prototype of the perfect family and the intercessors of the Holy Trinity. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen. Hi, Father. How are you? I'm good, Karen. I know it's hot there. I know you're um, doing another conference. Could you tell us where you are right now? I'm in Colorado Springs at the St. Thomas Aquinas Society Conference. It's a five-day conference. Uh, you know, uh, Teresa Lawrence, who's been doing this for 23 years, uh, who takes one leap of faith after another, uh, decides uh, in spite of COVID-19, the hotel gave her the uh, permission to do it. And uh, she is having even a more aggressive uh, conference than she's had in the past. Uh, three tracks uh, all day long, uh, five days live, live speakers, uh, adoration, confession, uh, exhibits. It's just it's incredible. It's absolutely amazing. I can't say enough about this woman and this conference. So it's stthomasaquinassociety.org. That's beautiful. I, I think everybody's so hungry and they're, uh, they're looking for the fountains, you know, of life. So Father, um, well, everybody out there, uh, you know Father. Father is a pro-life priest on steroids. He's the one who's going after saving all these children and uh, treating these women who are in peril of losing their children with love, with the Red Rose Rescue. It is a very beautiful thing. I've seen him while he was on live, and it's, it's just a really beautiful way that he reaches out to these women. And some listen, some don't, but it, he always tries. And he's, um, if you've seen one of the thumbnails that we had on him, he was uh, the priest that was arrested by the cops in, in one of those. And it takes a lot of fortitude, a lot of bravery and courage to step out to do what is right, what is right by Jesus. And we really appreciate you, Father. And we just don't want to put you on a pedestal or anything like that. We just want, instead, instead the better thing to do is to encourage to be people to be like you, that this is the way we should be, not not lukewarm, but full of that fervency. And so um, anybody who wants to look at his uh, website, I encourage you, he's the, he's the founder of Life Ministries, and it's lifeministries.org, lifeministries.org. Go check it out, um, write it down, and um, Father, I'm going to hand this over to you. And oh, oh, one more thing, Father. LifeMinistriesUS.org. Life oh, I'm sorry. LifeMinistriesUS.org, right? LifeMinistriesUS.org. Uh, Father, so, one, so second, one second, one second, one um, second. I, I know you're going to be talking about the uh, Catholic vote, but if you have a, a little extra, a little extra time afterwards, maybe you could give us a tiny, tiny bit of the purgatory talk you talked about today because people love hearing about that. But if you don't, it's okay. It's just whatever you feel the Holy Spirit leads you. Let's talk about that first. Uh, everybody who's watching obviously has access to Facebook, I hope. So 
you can go on my pages and I do a conference on purgatory where we should all have a devotion to the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them. And of course, uh, what's important is our deceased loved ones and family members. We never assume that anyone goes straight to heaven, dies at saints, regardless of how uh, saintly their lives appear. So we have a devotion to the souls in purgatory. We should have a devotion to the souls in purgatory. The overwhelming majority of the souls in purgatory most likely have no one praying for them. And so it's important that we pray for all the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them. Now, my conference uh, revolves around three parables that Jesus teaches that really does not name purgatory because purgatory is not named in Scripture. Uh, but the three parables are the rich young man comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, go sell all you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. He walked away dejected because he had many things. That's the first parable that Jesus specifically is teaching about purgatory. The second parable is the wedding banquet where the man not dressed for the feast uh, is thrown out of uh, the uh, wedding feast. Uh, but uh, he wasn't thrown out because he wasn't dressed for the feast because he wasn't washed clean. Uh, if you watch the conference, you'll get the answer to that. And that, of course, is about heaven, hell, and purgatory. And then the final most dramatic one is the rich man and Lazarus, where most people think that the rich man is in hell while Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham. But by no means, the rich man is in purgatory. And if you watch the video, uh, there is uh, absolutely the case to be made for the fact that the rich man is in purgatory and not in hell. So check it out. Uh, and uh, I do a modern day parable that shows the difference between our doctrine of purgatory and our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic, who just believe in heaven and hell and no purgatory, and how uh, shallow that is, how unreasonable it is. The most reasonable uh, doctrine on, uh, that we have is the doctrine of purgatory, where Christ's justice meets his mercy. So go to my social media platforms, whether it be Catholic Pro-Life, uh, whether it be uh, my social media page, my personal page, uh, it's uh, there. It's over 7,000 views already. So um, uh, it's, or you can go to my YouTube channel because uh, basically the same conference uh, I've given in the past is on my YouTube channel. Now, today, Karen, I'd like to speak to you, our viewers, our listeners, about the sin of scandal and how it relates to the upcoming election, how it's a Catholic issue and how it really leads us to the fact that no Catholic can vote for Joe Biden. And I think that our viewers, our listeners, have to understand the sin of scandal in order to understand why a Catholic cannot vote for Joe Biden without committing mortal sin. So let's quickly go over the sin of scandal. Interestingly enough, the sin of scandal is under the fifth commandment, Thou shall not kill. Uh, and why? Because the sin of scandal is the killing of somebody's soul. Jesus says in Scripture, don't be afraid of the one who can kill your body. Be afraid of the one who can kill your body and take your soul. And scandal can absolutely do that. And there's only four articles, four short articles in the teaching of scandal but it's powerful. It's 2284, 85, 86, and 87. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about these four articles and then put it in the context of this election and Joe Biden. So scandal is an attitude or behavior which leads another to do evil. The person who gives scandal becomes his neighbor's tempter. He damages virtue and integrity. He may even draw his brother into spiritual death, eternal damnation. Scandal is a grave offense if by deed or omission. So that's the first important thing. It can be done by deed or omission. By, by not bringing an awareness to the sin of scandal, confronting somebody about their persistent mortal sin, being in the, uh, uh, committing the sin of scandal, even... By omitting, not confronting it, you could be committing a grave sin yourself. 
uh, who uh, scandal is a grave offense by deed or omission. Another is deliberately led into a grave offense. All right. Scandal takes on a particular gravity, so it's even a worse mortal sin if by reason of the authority of those who cause it or the weakness of those who are scandalized. So let's think for a second. Does Joe Biden have authority? Absolutely he was. He's, he was an elected official, a powerful man in the government for decades, and he's running for president right now to be the most powerful man in the country and on the face of the earth. Uh, and uh, who is uh, those who may be scandalized, the weakness? Well, those of us, all right, who he will lord over uh, as an elected Catholic official. But also the bishops have authority. And indeed, we are called to be submissive. And if we are not educated as the Catholic faithful, then we are prone to weakness. So keep those in mind. Uh, scandal is grave when given by those who, by the nature of office, are obliged to teach and educate others. Who's that? The bishops, right? Jesus reproaches the scribes and the Pharisees on this account. He likens them to wolves in sheep's clothing. Scandal can be provoked by laws and institution, right? All right, laws, laws about abortion, legalizing abortion. If we think about the fact that the single biggest reason why women have abortion is because it's legal, because it's legal, right? So abortion is a scandal committed by many people, many Catholics, and it's the law that's, that is provoking this scandal. And, of course, those who promote those laws are committing the sin of scandal. Therefore, they are guilty of scandal who establishes laws or social structures leading to the decline of morals and the corruption of religious practices or social conditions that intentionally or not, so by deed or omission, intentionally or not, make Christian conduct and obedience to the commandment difficult all right, so the last one, and this is really the exclamation point, 2287. Anyone who uses the power at their disposal in such a way that it leads others to do wrong becomes guilty of scandal and becomes responsible for the evil that he has directly or indirectly encouraged, right? So as a Catholic voters, what is the power at our disposal? our vote. Can we lead others to do wrong? Yes. If we vote for Joe Biden, who can create laws, support laws that support abortion, euthanasia, and we're going to get into the list of scandals that Biden is responsible for, is guilty of, persistent mortal sin relative to as a Catholic elected official. So keep all those things in mind and let's look at Joe Biden. So a reading on 2284 to 2287 on scandal raises several concerns about Joe Biden as a Catholic, for our bishops as our shepherds, and for Catholic faithful who might be inclined to vote for Joe Biden. Joe Biden is clearly in persistent mortal sin and has already, and rightfully so, been refused communion on at least one occasion that we know of been refused communion because of his scandalous positions on any number of issues in which he defies his Catholic faith. And what are these positions? Well, first of all, Joe Biden supports the daily mass murder of preborn children up to the day of birth. Joe Biden supports uh, the murder through euthanasia and assisted suicide of the elderly, the disabled, the medically vulnerable. Joe Biden supports sexual disorders such as lesbianism, homosexuality, uh, transgenderism, uh, and also immoral experimentation, in vitro fertilization, embryonic stem cell tissue research. These attack Catholic marriage and the family. Joe Biden himself presided over same-sex marriage in direct opposition to Catholic teaching, Catholic mandate. His environmental policies, a lot of people say, well, the Democrats have a, a better environmental policy than, than Republicans. Well, Joe Biden's environmental policies are built upon population control, contraception, abortion, and this is in direct 
opposition to St. Uh, Pope Francis, or Pope, Pope Francis's Laudate Si, right? Uh, so Pope Francis is teaching on the environment. Joe Biden's environmental policy is in opposition to that. Now, Joe Biden passed crime bills in the 1990s, and he still brags about passing these crime bills, but these crime bills supported uh, included the death penalty. And by many accounts, these crime bills now, people are looking back at these crime bills and say these crime bills are racist. And if you look at the Senate hearings back in those days when he co-sponsored these bills, he made a lot of racist statements. Uh, and again, he still brags about those racist statements and these crime bills even today. Now, he even admitted that as president, he would force the little sisters of the poor and thereby all Catholics, really bully all Catholics, the little sisters of the poor, to pay for contraception and abortion. Now, this is in spite of the fact that the Supreme Court of the United States just sided with the little sisters of the poor, their freedom of conscience as religious sisters to not have to pay for abortion and contraception. So the Supreme Court sided with them. Two liberals on the Supreme Court sided with them. Uh, the president side, But Joe Biden will ignore the Supreme Court, ignore Catholic conscience, ignore Catholic freedom of religion, and force us to pay for abortion and contraception. So all these are outright attacks on our Catholic faith. He's a walking, talking scandal. That's how I refer to him. And he rightfully has been re re refused communion, uh, refused the Eucharist, because, again, he's an ongoing, persistent, mortal sin. He has separated himself from communion within the church. And he scandalizes Catholic faith in so many ways uh, that objectively he actually seems to be anti-Catholic in many of his beliefs, uh, as I pointed out. Now, there's also another potential Catholic scandal here that maybe even be more serious, and that's our U.S. bishops not forthrightly proclaiming what I have just laid out about Joe Biden. And every Catholic knows all of this, but... Uh, since the bishops have ignored all of this and have been remained silent about it, we see every election period about 50% of Catholics vote for candidates just like Joe Biden, not Catholic candidates, but candidates just like Joe Biden, right? And so this idea of the silence of the U.S. bishops about Joe Biden's actual idolatry because he puts his his evil political agenda before his Catholic faith, it's idolatry. He does so because uh, one of the reasons a case could be made for the fact that he has the tacit approval from the bishops, the silent uh, approval of the bishops. And so I'm, I'm encouraging every Catholic to read the scandal, uh, read about Joe Biden, uh, and contact their bishops, encourage the bishops to denounce Biden's scandalizing of our Catholic faith, and then also demand right, that, the, that the bishops end their scandal of silence. And I'm also letting Catholics know that they can't risk the grave sin of scandal by supporting this man all right, with their vote, by voting for this man. And see, if you see, if we vote for Joe Biden, we're really heaping scandal upon scandal upon scandal, right? We vote, and what we're saying is then, Hey, Joe Biden, we support your scandal. Well, we're committing scandal by doing that. And then by not uh, demanding and encouraging the bishops to speak out, we are tolerating the bishops' scandal. Now, a lot of people, Karen, this is very interesting, right? I haven't mentioned the president. I haven't mentioned Trump. And uh, when I talk to a lot of people about this, they say, well, what about, what about Trump? Well, what about Trump? This is not about Trump got nothing to do with Trump. Trump's not even Catholic. This is a Catholic issue. A Catholic can't vote for Biden, whether they in good conscience feel they can or can't vote for Trump. And there are alternatives. There's third party alternatives. There's write-in alternatives. If you can't bring yourself to vote for Trump, 
all right, you write somebody in, I give people permission to write me in, write the Pope in. Uh, the American Solidarity Party may be on the ballot. Brian Campbell, their candidate. Uh, uh, the 48% the, the of Catholics in 2016 that voted for Hillary, that was bad enough. But now Biden is a Catholic, scandalizing his Catholic faith, immersed in idolatry. Catholics cannot vote for Joe Biden. So it's even more important now to find an alternative whether you can vote for Trump or not. Uh, and so uh, this is not about who a Catholic uh, can vote for, who they should vote for, but it's who every Catholic can't vote for and no Catholic can vote for Joe Biden. So uh, that is it, folks. If you want this, I'm going to be posting it on my social media platforms. I'm going to be posting it on my website. Uh, you can check it out. You can download it. It includes the church's teaching on scandal. We need to encourage our bishops. We need to ask our bishops. Bishops, your excellency, is Joe Biden guilty of scandal? He has to say yes. There's no denying it. And bishop, are you going to speak out to the faithful and educate them about scandal and Joe Biden's persistent mortal sin? And then you ask him, can any Catholic vote for Joe Biden, would they not be committing the sin of scandal? Every bishop knows that indeed they would be. So this is the, the tack that I am taking as I go on the road for life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you saw me in my St. Teresa Mobile Chapel, Mother Teresa Mobile Chapel. My phone overheated. Now I'm in my, my truck, my SUV that I pull my mobile chapel around. I'll be traveling around the country between now and election and uh, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. It's not about supporting D Donald Trump by no means, uh, even though I do support Donald Trump for one reason and one reason only. Donald Trump in 2018 said that he has a solution to the abortion issue that nobody else has. The vice of an inflammatory sense, but so he can't explain it, but he's working on it. I know what that solution is. It's the presidential executive order on personhood. I am confident that if Trump gets reelected, he is going to end preborn child killing by recognizing constitutional personhood from conception. Uh, and indeed, this will be a decisive end to preborn child killing. He'll become the new Lincoln. And if he doesn't do it, well, I will tell you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'll be off the Trump bandwagon after he gets reelected as quick as that, uh, because then he'll be responsible for the blood of every baby that dies if he doesn't sign this presidential executive order. So this election has a lot at stake. It could lead to the decisive ending of pre-born child killing. And surely, regardless of whether you, again, in good conscience, can vote for President Trump for whatever reason, you cannot vote for Joe Biden. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, you know, the, the whole thing is, is um, I think, going back down to, do you love God or not? If you love God, you obey his commandments. You obey his commandments, but you need to know what sin is and what sin is not. And so you could easily detect people who, who are with God or not. He said so many times, I think this year alone, we hear it all the time, stand on one side or the other, get your blessing or your curse. I mean, like if we decide to choose anti-life, we will get a curse. What is that curse? The repercussion? is the 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 possibility that we won't have freedom of religion we won't have you know we'll live in a socialized government this is why we have to ruffle feathers because people are slumbering they're not awake somehow they don't see the real realization of this but i think even before that even having before having the fear of walking into that path we have to love god because loving god is obeying him well, Karen, I mean, that's absolutely true, and you brought it down to the, the most common denominator, but the fact of the matter is people look at Donald Trump, they see an immoral man, they see a man who, in spite of his rhetoric, they don't believe, based on his life, that, that he is who he says he is, uh, and so uh, they, in good conscience, can't bring themselves to vote for Donald Trump, right? 52% of Catholics did vote for Donald Trump last election. 
I'm convinced those 52 percent are going to vote for President Trump again. Will that be enough to win him the election? Well, the fact of the matter is the 48 percent who voted for Hillary Clinton four years ago, they cannot vote for Joe Biden because Hillary was not Catholic. Joe Biden is Catholic. The depth of evil with Joe Biden, because he is Catholic, the more is given, more is expected. He is given even less. He's immersed in idolatry. He's immersed in scandal. No Catholic can vote for Joe Biden without committing the sin of scandal. So, again, this has nothing to do with President Trump. This has nothing to do with the choices you have out there. This is us Catholics looking at a Catholic candidate, and we should be repulsed by this Catholic candidate and saying, you know what, Mr. Biden, you are scandalizing me. You're scandalizing our Catholic faith. And there's no way I am going to support you scandalizing my Catholic faith. End of discussion. That's it. Got nothing to do with Trump. Amen. And I agree 100 percent wholeheartedly. Let's keep on um, waking people up for the next three months. Father, we only have three months and the people out there, they understand. They understand. We just have to be like replications of people who uh, who really, really want to go out there and fight for truth, fight for God, fight for life. Well, the faithful Catholics, Karen, have to, because I'm the only one talking about scandal and how it applies to this election and Joe Biden. So the Catholics who are faithful need to learn about scandal, uh, need to uh, understand it. And uh, also, now I am giving a conference tomorrow uh, on scandal, on Joe Biden. You guys just got a piece of it. I'm also going to be talking about Evangelion Vitae and living the gospel of life. And that conference will be all the people need to really convince, I believe, their Catholic brothers and sisters who are hesitant, who are hesitant about who to vote for. All right. Well, I tell you what, this will make their choice easy because it's going to tell them who they can't vote for. Right. So uh, indeed, um, uh, I encourage uh, everyone to. Check out my social media platforms tomorrow. I think my talk is, I'm sorry, Saturday morning. Saturday morning is my talk on this issue. I think it's early Saturday morning. Uh, It's probably about 11 o'clock Eastern time. Okay. And could you repeat the website they could find it again? Well, my social media platform uh, Okay. is is where they're going to find that conference, although I'll be posting it. I think uh, on my uh, lifeministriesus.org, lifeministriesus.org, but that might not be until sometime next week. Okay. Okay, okay Father, thank you so much, and keep up the good work. You're, we're behind you. God bless you. All right, let me give everybody a blessing. The yes. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And remember, everybody, go out to the world today and give them heaven. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Father. God bless you.